It's This American Life, Amara Glass. Each week in our program, of course, we choose some theme, bring you a variety of different kinds of stories on that theme. Today's program, home movies, and the stories they tell intentionally and unintentionally. We've arrived at Act 3 of our program. Back when home movies were actually movies, real movies on real film, they were expensive to make. Cameras were hard to use. You actually had to know how to work a camera pretty well. You'd run out of film in just three minutes. So most people really did restrict themselves to filming celebrations, babies, and vacations. But of course, those days are long gone. Once video cameras became cheap, people left them running for hours. And nobody knows this better than the producers of America's Funniest Home Videos, which of course has been on forever, has an archive of 800,000 video clips sent into them. Todd Thick is the co-executive producer of the show, Mike Pileschi, is a writer and supervising producer. Trace Beaulieu used to write for the program, doesn't anymore. Anyway, they've each spent hundreds and hundreds of hours watching home video clips over the years. They say they have seen video where people just set up a tripod and film themselves watching TV. They have no idea why. A lot of kids on stage. People golfing because they want to get their swing down. So that's why we have a million, you know, people losing their drivers. And I also see Little League Baseball game, you know. We, we get a lot of the, the kid walking off the field saying, I got to go pee, mommy, and stuff like that. Then kids sleeping on toilets. Parents universally think their child sleeping on the toilet is funny. And when somebody has a video of, for example, I, I've, I've seen videos on, on the show of somebody trying to change a light bulb and then a mishap happening. How do you explain the fact that they're filming the, the, the changing of a light bulb? They don't lead very interesting lives. No, I, uh, <laughs> that's a highlight. Uh, uh, Trace, why did they tape themselves changing a light bulb? Because they don't have kids and their cat is boring. And they got a camera. And is it your impression that there are a lot of people out there filming all the time? I think that uh, that is fairly prevalent out there. I think that people have cameras, they're shooting stuff. We sometimes say, well, what are they shooting here? What do they have the camera set up for? But sometimes we've seen uh, people uh, videotaping their sheet rocking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, why are they taping this? And then someone will fall through a ceiling. And, uh, it, you know, you see one and you go, okay, that's an anomaly. And then you see 20 guys taping themselves sheet rocking. <laughs> I oh. think you tape what you got, you know, if that's your life and that's what you do. If you're Cameron Diaz, you're at a premiere. And if you're sheet rocking, <laughs> There was a guy yesterday pulling his cactus out alongside of the pool, and then he fell into the pool. We thought, it was, did, what, did he set that up? Or was, did, did they really say, we've got to go film Dad taking the cactus out? It was a setup. We, we look, we can spot the setups all the time. Aha. Uh-huh. Now, that, that's very interesting. What's the tip-off that it's a setup? How, what, what are the tricks? How can you tell? Camera placement is a big tip-off. You know, when they, they have the shot. Normally, they don't get the shot. The camera's moving around, and they miss the, the birthday cake burning someone. Right. Yeah, usually when the moment happens, when uh, you're taping something and something happens, you you drop the camera just for a split second or something, or just you, you take your eye off it and the, cam- the shot jerks away. But if you hold that shot steady, there was no surprise to you. I never would have thought of that. I think it's an involuntary reaction. 